My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. What I have on my back here is the Decathlon MT900 70 plus 10 liter backpack. 80 liters. I've been testing this out for a good part of the year and I'm ready to share with you all my thoughts, my opinions on this pack. Is it worth $210? Is this the best use of your money to buy this backpack? I will answer all of these questions in this review and the review begins right now. As I just mentioned, I've been testing this pack out for a long period of time. I have roughly 125 miles worth of trail time with this pack. And I can tell you this everyone, the pack is not bad, but the ultimate question is, is it worth $210? Or is there a better way to spend your money? Potentially on another pack from Decathlon. I want you all to keep in the back of your mind the Decathlon Trek 170 liter backpack. We'll be coming back to that very soon. For now everyone, let's go ahead and take a close look at this pack. Let's go over all of the functions and features. As you all are about to see, this pack has a ton of features. Starting with the lid here, this is a free floating lid. You have two buckles in the front, you have straps in the back, you can raise this, you can lower it, you can cinch it down. On top, you have shock cord, fully adjustable with a pull. On the back side here, you have a large lid pocket. You have dual zipper pulls. The zipper's very smooth. And on the inside here, on the top of the lid, you have a zippered compartment. Outside of that feature, this is just a large amount of space. On the very front of the pack, you have a ton of webbing here. So you can attach gear, attach items. You can attach your own shock cord to this if you like. Right here, you have a zipper. On the other side, you have a zipper. This is so that this panel can be opened up just like so. That way you can access the contents from here. This pack features two ways to load and unload. Here and here. Taking a look at the bottom of the pack, you have two compression straps. You also have gear loops for attaching trekking poles and so on. With this pack here, you do not have a dedicated sleeping bag compartment, so there is no bottom zip. When you go to the side of the pack, you have two compression straps. Behind these compression straps, you have a large zippered pocket, which is pleated, which allows for stretching while you're filling this full. This pocket goes from the top of the pack, basically down to the bottom, is about four inches between the bottom of the pack and the bottom of this pocket. On top of that pocket, you have a stretchy hydration sleeve. Below that, you have an angled water bottle holder that also features a draw pool. When you go to the other side of the backpack, you have the exact same features. Two compression straps, long sleeve pocket that's also pleated, stretchy hydration pocket, and below that, you have the angled water bottle pocket. Now, my friends, let's focus on the back side of this backpack. This has just about every feature that you can imagine. You have load lifters, you have a handle. The torso length is fully adjustable, so you can adjust this harness to get to fit you. With the torso length being fully adjustable with this backpack, you have two additional buckles above the harness system. So if you need to expand these, you can. You have straps on the harness so you can hang gear if you want to. You even have loops to hang on to. You have a sternum strap that's fully adjustable, emergency whistle. The straps on the harness itself are padded so they don't rub you raw as you're hiking. You can see the two aluminum stays that make up the frame for this pack. Then you have the waist belt. And of course, the waist belt's fully adjustable. And on each side of the belt, you have two pockets. Both of these are zippered and both are quite small. Now everyone, let's go to the inside of this backpack. Let's release the two compression straps. You have a strap across the top. On the back of the lid, you have a zippered compartment for the rain cover. Disconnecting that top strap, this gives you access to this front panel. You can unzip, break the Velcro, and now you have access to the contents of your backpack. That is a really nice feature. At the top of the backpack, you have two draw pulls for the expansion and for the base of the lid. With the lid open, you can see the hydration port, which is on the right side of the backpack if you're wearing it. Let's focus our attention again on this front panel. When you open this up, you can see that on the front of this pack, you have three compression straps. You can use these to secure your loadout. Behind that, you have a hydration sleeve along with a hydration hook at the top of the pack. Lastly, everyone, on the back side of that front panel, you have a zippered mesh pocket. As you all have seen with the 70 plus 10 backpack, it is feature rich. There's not much in terms of features that this pack doesn't have, that it doesn't offer. Before moving on to the review, let's go over some stats real quick, starting with the materials. Primarily, this is a polyester backpack, a 600 denier polyester. This polyester material features a polyurethane coating. The backpack has YKK zippers. And when it comes to the dimensions, you're looking at 30.3 inches tall. It has a depth of 15 inches 
and a width of 19 inches. The weight of this backpack is a staggering six pounds. That's what polyester material will get you a lot of weight. If you want a strong backpack that's made from polyester, it has to be a high denier and it's going to be heavy. And that is certainly what we have here. This pack is available in two colors, a gray color and a black color. And that takes us over to my review of this backpack, starting with the pros. First off, the overall quality of this is excellent. The fit and finish, perfect. There's no loose threads, everything looks great, the stitching is fantastic, there's no issues here. That's impressive considering the fact that even expensive name brand companies often have loose threads and so on. Next everyone, this pack features a ton of pockets, 10 pockets in total. That translates to a lot of organization. You may like this, you may not, to each their own. Some people like less pockets, some people like more. That's how it goes. Next folks, this pack features a ton of rigging options. You have loops and straps and elastic all over this pack so you can attach to the outside if that's something that you want to do. For some, attaching gear to the outside of the pack is a cardinal sin. If you're one of those people, don't worry, you have 80 liters of capacity. This is a big backpack. And with that being said, when it comes to comfort, if you can keep your load out below 35 pounds, this pack is comfortable. Once you go above 35 pounds, that's where weaknesses with the harness system really begin to become prevalent. The padding for the shoulders here, it's wide, but it's not very thick. It's not very soft, it's a little hard. The same applies for the waist belt. It's padded, but it's almost too soft. It gives too much. With that being said, the torso length and the waist belt, both are fully adjustable. That's a pro for this pack. You can get this pack to fit you, and it doesn't matter if you have a short torso length or a long one. Again, everyone, the top loading, front loading, those are awesome features. The compression straps on the inside, those really do come in handy when it comes to securing your loadout. As far as ventilation goes, it's not bad with this pack. You do have some recesses in the middle for your back here. You have a large recess between that padding and the lumbar support. Overall, ventilation is adequate, especially for a pack of this size. Lastly, everyone, the slanted water bottle pockets are excellent. And again, you have one on each side. Oftentimes when it comes to backpacks, you will find one slanted pocket, if any. Very rarely do you find two. And that pro takes us over to the cons that I have for this backpack. Con number one is price, $210 for this backpack. That's high. That's approaching top tier backpack pricing. For $210, you would expect this backpack to be made from nylon, but that's not the case. This is a primarily polyester made backpack. And typically when you have a backpack made from polyester, the price is low because polyester tends to be far less expensive. $210 for this does not make a whole lot of sense to me especially when you look at other backpacks that Decathlon offers that are made from similar materials, but feature a more advanced, more modern design. I will come back to that in just a second. For $210, you could purchase an Osprey Atmos AG 65 liter on sale, and that is a substantially more comfortable backpack than this. Again, $210 just does not make sense for this backpack. And I think that's the biggest issue when it comes to this backpack. The price is simply too high. And that's especially true when you look at the overall design of this backpack. It is quite outdated. What I'm talking about specifically is this harness system and the way that it adjusts. Making adjustments to this torso system is a real pain in the It's an outdated system that a lot of companies have moved away from including decathlon the next con that i have for this backpack is weight for a 80 liter backpack this is six pounds that's incredibly heavy in general 80 liter backpacks will weigh about four and a half pounds six pounds that's nuts this is a very heavy backpack and it's noticeable from the moment that you pick it up it's substantial i do have some additional cons concerning this backpack first there's no dedicated sleeping bag compartment second the waist belt pockets are very, very small. Once you have the waist belt connected and on, it's hard to access and use those pockets. They're simply too small. And that takes us over to the last con that I have for this backpack, and it too is rather important. The overall comfort of this backpack is good, but it's not great. If your loadout's under 35 pounds, it's adequate. If your loadout's above 35 pounds, it's simply not comfortable. The padding is simply not good enough to support that type of weight, which is a shame considering this is an 80 liter backpack. This thing is huge. It's designed to hold a ton of gear, but at the same time, because of the harness system, because of the waist belt, because of the foam, it's not capable of carrying a heavy load out comfortably. Plus, this pack is $210. With all of these cons in mind, everyone, to summarize, 
I personally would not go out and purchase this backpack for $210. It does not make any sense to me. Again, folks, you could buy an Osprey Atmos AG, which is incredibly comfortable. That's going to carry a ton of weight, and you can find that sale price fairly often. But let's say that you don't want to spend $200 on a backpack. You don't have to. You can get very good backpacks for much less. For an example, the Decathlon Trek 100 70 liter backpack. It's $130 and it's one of the best backpacks I've ever used. Watch my review concerning that backpack. That backpack is from Decathlon. It costs $130 and it blows this pack out of the water. It features a very interesting torso adjustment system, which is unlike anything I've ever seen. You put the pack on, then you make the adjustments. You don't have to fiddle. You put the pack on, you make adjustments, and you go. And anytime you're out in the field, you can make an adjustment by simply pulling some straps. It's very, very impressive. It's very, very easy. I would personally go with the Trek 170 liter over this pack any day of the week. There's no reason to purchase this pack with the exception of one thing. If you like a backpack that has a ton of pockets, you may like this more. With the Trek 100, there's only a handful of pockets. In the end, everyone, this pack is not terrible, but the thing is this, for the same money or for less money, you could do much, much better, in my opinion, at least. And with that, my friends, I am done. Make sure to comment down below and share your thoughts. What do you all think about this backpack? It does not look bad. It has a ton of features, but it's expensive and it's heavy as hell. And at the same time, it's not super comfortable. And that's especially true once you begin going over the 30 pound mark. In the end, there's better packs out there. And that's my review. If you have found this episode helpful, hit the thumbs up. It's a great way to support the channel. If you want to support the channel, which is agenda free, I bought this with my own money. I'm testing this out, sharing information with you all for that simple purpose. I'm sharing information. That's it. If you want to support a channel that's like that, you can do so. Patreon, YouTube, it is appreciated. Until next time, everyone, take care, be well, strength and honor.